Hi, my name is Jamil Jaffer, and I'm the director of the ACLU's National Security Project. For the last seven years, we've been advocating for the closure of the prison at, at Guantanamo Bay. And one of the people we represent is Mohammed Jawad, who is a Pakistani national. And he was 16 years old when he was picked up by the United States in Afghanistan. And he's been held at Guantanamo now for almost seven years. The, the most remarkable thing, I think, about his story is the story of his prosecutor, the military prosecutor, uh, whose name is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Daryl Vandeveld. And Vandeveld was a prosecutorial zealot. Uh, to start with, but, but very recently he filed an affidavit, uh, a declaration in Jawad's case, asking that all the charges against Jawad be dropped. That may end up ending Jawad's military detention, uh, but it also ended up uh, ending Vandeveld's military career. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to close the program by, by reading just a, a short excerpt from Vandeveld's declaration. I, Daryl Vandevelt, declare as follows. I'm a lieutenant colonel in the Judge Advocate General Corps. Since the September 2001 attacks, I've served in Bosnia, Africa, Iraq, and Afghanistan. My awards include the Bronze Star Medal, the Iraqi Campaign Medal, and two Joint Merito Meritorious Unit Awards. I offer this declaration in support of Mohammed Jawad's petition for habeas corpus. I was the lead prosecutor assigned to the military commissions against Mr. Jawad until my resignation in September of 2008. Initially, the case appeared to be as simple as the street crimes I had prosecuted by the dozens in civilian life. But eventually, I, I began to harbor serious doubts about the strength of the evidence. Mr. Jawad was alleged to have thrown a gr grenade at US troops, but the victims of the attack had not seen the attacker. At least three other Afghans had been arrested for the crime and had subsequently confessed, casting considerable doubt on the claim that Jawad was solely responsible for the attack. And I learned that the written statement characterized as Jawad's personal confession could not possibly have been written by him because Jawad was functionally illiterate and could not read or write. The statement wasn't even in his native language. I also found evidence that Jawad had been badly mistreated by U.S. authorities in both Afghanistan and Guantanamo. Mr. Jawad's prison records referred to a suicide attempt, a suicide which he sought to accomplish by banging his head repeatedly against one of the cell walls. The records reflected 112 unexplained moves from cell to cell over a two-week period, an average of eight moves per day for 14 days. Mr. Jawad had been subjected to a sleep deprivation program known as the Frequent Flyer Program. I lack the words to express the heart sickness I experienced when I came to understand the pointless, purely gratuitous mistreatment of Mr. Jawad by my fellow soldiers. It's my opinion, based on my extensive knowledge of the case, that there is no credible evidence or legal basis to justify Mr. Jawad's detention in US custody or his prosecution by military commission. Holding Mr. Jawad for six years with no resolution of his case and with no terminus in sight is something beyond a travesty. I've taken an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and I remain confident that I've done so, spending over four of the past seven years away from my family, my home, my civilian occupation, all without any expectation of or desire for any reward greater than the knowledge that I've remained true to my word and have done my level best to rise to our nation's defense in its time of need. I did not quit the military commissions or resign. Instead, I personally petitioned the Army's Judge Advocate General to allow me to serve the remaining six months of my two-year voluntary obligation in Afghanistan or Iraq. In the exercise of his wisdom and discretion, he permitted me to be released from active duty. However, had I been returned to Afghanistan or Iraq, and had I encountered Mohammed Jawad in either of those hostile lands where two of my friends have been killed in action and another one of my very best friends was terribly wounded, I have no doubt at all, none, that Mr. Jawad would pose no threat whatsoever to me, his former prosecutor and now repentant persecutor. Six years is long enough for a boy of 16 to serve in virtual solitary confinement in a distant land for reasons he may never fully understand. Mr. Jawad should be released to resume his life in a civil society for his sake and for our own sense of justice 
and perhaps to restore a measure of our basic humanity. Thank you all for coming. I'd like to thank the readers as well. As, as Larry said, um, as, as Larry mentioned earlier, it, it, we hope that you'll come to other Penn World Voices events. There's a full schedule on, uh, on Penn's website. Uh, we also hope that you will join the ACLU if you're not already a member. Uh, we're at www.aclu.org. Thanks very much. <laughs>